Hey guys, I'm just hanging out till everyone shows up. And I'll be yarn. I was trying to finish up lunch. And you all know that I'm missing a tooth and I'm wearing a partial and everything sticks to that stupid thing. So excuse me for the awful way this video started. You know, I wish we could go back into live streams and just like cut off the beginning. <laughs> That's the hairiest part because you never see, it, it's not specific about when it starts. So here's my poster. I'll put this out. And I'll begin by letting everybody know, let's see, who's here already? Josie, Peter Pan, Jody, and Christy. Hello, guys. Welcome to Jen Evers' YouTube channel. Jen Evers, that'd be me. <laughs> we are tied to Quality Crafts, if you found me in Quality Crafts, because that is my Quality family group that I invite everyone from my YouTube channel over to um, enjoy inspiring and being inspired by others by creating and sharing my my envelope full of papers just fell um creating everything and then sharing everything that you make so we have weekly challenges that run sunday through sunday and then we have monthly swaps that kathy dunahy takes care of so thank you Dun kathy dunahy she is awesome she's my right hand gal she helps me with everything and she's amazing so today's live stream so we have two live streams during the week. We always have one on Thursdays from 6 to 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. And Sundays like today from 2 to 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. Now, I am... I'm not moving. She says I'm not moving. We'll have to change my title. We're not doing encaustic art today. We are actually doing what I'm calling altered gatefold cards. And of course, chat. Oh, good. I'm glad. Peter Pan said I'm moving for her. Woo. I was like, everything on my end is working out perfectly right now. And I, I don't see any glitches. So, um, refresh, Kathy. Where was I? Oh, I actually do have a blog. And I do need to mention my blog today because... If you're looking for the measurements that I'm giving you during the video today, not all of them. Um, just the basic measurements to, to create this card. They will be on jenskualitycrafts.blogspot.com. So please check this out. I can't put links in the live stream, but that is the link. Excuse me, if after the video you need that again for me from me Deb Witt says I'm moving too so I think all is well um just come to quality crafts we'd love to have you new people are welcome to join anytime be sure if you're joining me from this YouTube feed live stream feed that you are introducing yourself and friending me so I know who you are because there are a lot of people who are scamming through fake profiles and I don't want to have all that stuff coming into our group because nobody wants that kind of drama. Oh good, Angela says I'm moving. Dana's here. Dana, every day I say that. I'm not going to leave now until you tell me how to pronounce that. Is it Dana Fryer or Dana? Or maybe I'm saying it completely wrong. Oh, you're able to, to type in my, my blog on there? It let you type that in? That's cool. T, capital T-A-P, tap. She typed in the um, blog. That's awesome. I thought that was totally like they just kicked you out and wouldn't let you do it. Yay. Hey, Aunt Beck. The puppet girl, Sarah. Welcome, everybody. If you're not already on Quality Crafts uh, on Facebook, please join. I'm just going to say it one more time. Friend me and come and, and start a dialogue with me so that I know who you are so I can add you quickly. That would be awesome. I did. It's Dana. I got it right the first try. Okay. <laughs> I just feel bad because, honestly, guys, 
and, and I don't take it personal and get all up in arms, but I do really enjoy it when people pronounce my name right. So I try to extend the same um, courtesy for you guys as well. And tap is Sean. <laughs> I probably won't remember that. <laughs> okay, I'm just being honest. I probably won't remember that, but I will. I will try. I do try. Okay. Oh, the Sarah said she subscribed to the blog. Thank you, Sarah. Like. I, I will start posting more stuff to my blog if people show an interest, but to be honest, like it, nobody sub, nobody subscribes to the blog. It's like a dead fish in the water, so I don't know. If it starts getting more um, populated, I think that I'll start making some more regular posts there if, if you guys enjoy that type of thing. Let's get on with the show. I feel like I've been blah, blah, blahing in your ear. Yeah, it's been five minutes. That's way too long. But here's the thing. It's fun when you're live, right? And you can react to me. And if you're already, and if you're watching this video archived, you can skip all this beginning garbage, right? So that's cool. This is the um, this is the card, the altered gatefold card that I showed on Quality Crafts for our challenge. Because as you know, I'm sorry, I'm waving my hands over on the camera. That looks really awful. Um. As you know, on Quality Crafts, our challenges run Sunday to Sunday, but I put them up typically on Saturday, the day before it starts, just so that uh, Kathy and I can get a hold of exactly what's going on. Then, that's what I that's what I wrap my head around, what I prepare for, for the um, live stream on Sundays, which is today. So this is already up on the Quality Crafts. It's a gatefold card, as you can see, but it's got three panels over the top. Now, I think other people may have a different name for this card. I'm just calling it an altered gatefold card because we're going to do another card um, live today that's going to be a little bit different than this, but I'm going to give you the general directions on how to create this one. Now, for the challenge, this is all inspirational. You can take this in any direction you want as long as the base of your card is a gatefold card. Go wild. Be creative. Add your own unique flair to it. Do not have to do one exactly like this, okay? And another cool um, thing about this is that if I can get this to clear up here, I really want you to see it clearly. This orange stuff is from the encaustic art video that we just recently did. There you can see it really well. So I do, from time to time, use the stuff that I have left over. And if you'll notice, I have a new black background. All I did was switch out my Ranger craft mat that was getting all spotty and dotted and yucked for a black, very, very thin black, um, I don't know exactly what to call it. It's an, like an oven mat. Same, made out of the same stuff. It's silicone. It's non stick everything will slide right off it it's easy to clean up but it's made for the oven I just like the dark color I thought that might be beneficial so let me know if that's if there's any difference for you guys in this one versus the brown or tan one Oh, cool. So Jody Panache, who is Jody Jody Sutherland on Facebook, she is um, she kindly collects all of your names every week for the um, giveaway from the live streams. However, I'm gonna start going. Um, it's it it's kind of a little bit of work for me. Plus, I have to mail everything out and get a hold of you guys. And I'm so involved with so many things right now that I'm going to. Thanks, Kathy. Um, she reminded me that uh, I need to announce the winner from... Wait a minute. What do you mean winner from Wednesday? I don't do live streams on Wednesdays. Do you mean Thursday? Yeah. Pardon, us, pardon me while I get this all straightened out here. Um, we are going to continue to do... A winner from every Thursday live stream. We're no longer going to do winners for the Sunday live streams. So, let me see if I got the right document up here. 
Thursday, December 8th, which was our encaustic art play where we played with the crayons and the, a little bit and the little iron. Um, the winner for that was Ivy Marino. I don't know if Ivy's here today, but need not be present to win. I will hunt you down. And if I can't find you, then I can't find you. Um, here's the deal. Sometimes I can't find you. <laughs> if you're just on this live stream and I can't find you, um, I would very much like it for if you want to win on the Thursday live streams from here on out, make sure that you're a part of Quality Crafts and that you have your name and address in, well, at least be a part of Quality. If you have your name and address in the file, that's even better because then I can send it out right away. I, I'm a very creative person, but I'm very forgetful. And if I don't send things out like right now, who knows what happens to them? So that that will really help me out. I want to make sure that whoever wins gets their stuff, gets it right away, and that gets taken care of. So yay, Ivy Marino. You won from the, the encaustic art play on December 8th, which was our last live stream on Thursday. This is what we're doing today. Let's get on with the show. I made another one so you can see how they can be really different. This one I use some really shiny paper. Um, I don't always share with you where I get my paper from, but I happen to have this sitting next to me, so I'm going to show you. I look for these hot buys at, um, I think it was Michael's that had them all the time, or was it Joanne's? Shoot, I don't remember. But anyway, you can get 12 by 12 packs like this when they do these hot buys for like five bucks. This one is the French Country Stack. And it has a lot of papers that are, is this, this very light blue and kind of shabby chicish and green pinks. And a lot of it's really shiny. See that? Shiny, this one's shiny glittery. Shiny and glittery. There's some music notes. Oh, this one's really fun. Look at the print that's like peeking through that. So cool. Anyways, this is what I used to create this one. So now you can see the difference between these two. So we're going to create one together today, obviously. It's going to be even different, more different, differenter. <laughs> it's going to be differenter, people. Let me tell you. Um, this one, I went ahead and put on all these little blue tags. Do you see that? The little tabs. That's a lot of work, and I'm not doing, um, I'm not doing measurements for all that jazz. This one I did not. You'll see that it's just the white base of the card, and I think that's totally fine. And the inside has that really fun, shimmery, shiny stuff. I love it. Now, there's no sentiment on this, and I love that. Two pieces, because I like to be able to just grab cards from my stash, put my own sentiment on it, and be like, oh, today, this is going to be a birthday card. Because <laughs> that's what I need. Or, man, I really need a sympathy card. This will totally work. That's why I do it. The sentiment is always the last thing I think of. That's just how I create as an artist. I I don't have much of an explanation for that. I have some papers that are already decked out to go for this card. Um, and here's the beginning of the card. So these are all the measurements I'm going to give you. They will be on my blog, jenscoalitycrafts.blogspot.com. And... Any other measurements, it's going to be up to you to pause, go back to the video, pause, or like right now, write them down. This is how you make a gatefold card. You take an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and you cut it in half. So it's eight and a half by five and a half. And then this, these are my little directions on how to do this, but I'm going to physically show you how to do it. All right. So this is for the base of the card. You have your base of your card base here, which is eight and a half long, you know, wide by five and a half. This is how I do it. I know there are measurements that will give you um, the quarter of the card, but I always end up with a gap in my gateful card, and I hate the gap. So here's what I do: fold the card in half, match up your corners here, put a crease right here, but do not fold the card. All right. Now you have a crease at the top that you can look at. 
bring one side into that crease. Make sure that it's very, very straight on the sides and crease it down. Then all you have to do is bring the other side into that one. Make sure that your gatefold card closes just how it should and then crease that one as well. Okay, so you don't have that gap here. There you go. That is the base of that card. That's th These instructions create this base. Okay, write that down or check out my blog. <laughs> Here's the next step. The three panels that you need. Here we go. You need three panels now um, to create this one that are one and three quarter inch by four and a quarter inches, three of them. And I'm gonna reuse these, so this is the whole thing. Well, I'm not gonna save these now. I'm gonna actually glue these on top of here and that's gonna disappear and you're not gonna see that anymore. So if you need these measurements, go to my blog. They're there forever and a day. And then here are the ones that are gonna go on top of these. And these, here are the measurements. And those are just a quarter of an inch smaller, so they're one and a half by four. So I'm kinda um, just giving you a quick um, idea of all the pieces that we need so that if you're crafting along with me today you can go ahead and do that. I'm going to look for my base here. So I've got all my pieces. I just need a white base because I don't think I can cover this whole... Yeah, I'm not going to cover this one up. I'm going to make another white base with you guys. So I've got a full 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper and you put it in the long way and you cut it in half right down the middle. And you'll have two bases actually. Okay, I hope everyone who wanted to do this got those pieces down. We're gonna move on and I'm gonna create another base. By putting my corners together and making a crease and then bringing both sides into that crease. I just find that that is just the easiest way to do it. Hi, Tiana. Hi, Deborah. What else am I missing? Alrighty. Now the inside of the card is obviously a regular A2 size card, so it's four and a quarter by five and a half. So to make the base that's gonna go inside here, and this is not written anywhere, so if you want to know how to decorate just this inside piece, we're gonna cut off a quarter of an inch. We're gonna cut four by five and a quarter. And I'm using this colored paper, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that same colored paper, all right? four inches by five and a quarter. That will go on the inside with a little white border and then if you want to make the next piece that's just going to be a white piece that goes on top, that is going to be a quarter of an inch smaller even yet. So instead of four and a quarter, I'm sorry, four by five and a quarter, it's going to be five by three and three quarters. Okay, five by three and three quarters. And you know what? I don't have enough of that green showing that I'm happy with it, so I'm going even smaller. I'm going, let's see, I'm going three and a half 
by four and three quarters. So you can make that any size you want. This is the whole reason why I'm not giving you all these measurements because you could do them any, any way you want. Now, if you want to decorate these sides too, let me show you how to do that so that you can create your own, your own uh, measurements. All I'm going to do is just measure straight across and I get almost exactly two inches. So if you want a border, you would make it one and three quarters. You just cut off a quarter. And then of course this length, this lengthwise here should be five and a half. And if you want a white border on that side, then you would cut that to five and a quarter. Okay, so let's go back. This would be one and three quarters. This would be five and a quarter. five and a quarter by one and three quarters and then we should have a nice white border around the whole thing and that's how you get that border now if you don't want the white border then you go with the exact measurement and you just cut out that piece and glue that on so while we're on the inside of the card I'm just gonna glue all these pieces in right now And you can double you can double these up too like we did this middle one if you want if you've got several pieces of paper that go well together a lot of my videos videos you'll notice that especially the pre-taped ones I don't always show you how to make the entire card because I want you to learn how to make the card and then add all of your own personality into it and not just, you know, be stuck on having to follow a video for everything on your card. My goal is to make you confident enough to be um, willing to try new things and to become a better crafter in your own right. I have a red ribbon that I was going to add to this. I might add it to one of the sides. We'll see if it fits. All right, now let's glue these six pieces together so I can show you how the front goes. I can tell by where we're at with time right now that I, I just don't think we're going to get to the really fun card I wanted to do, but Maybe we'll get to do part of it. I should have done all the pieces ahead of time, but I wanted you to see the process. So I want to show you another way to alter a gatefold card that's not just this specific way. But I always have to start out with something. I always have to start out with something that I can give you the whole of so that you're walking away with a full project put something together. I don't want to just give you bits and pieces and have you walk away going on. Oh, I don't know what we did. That would be sad. Okay. These three pieces do not cover this whole front. There's going to be two little gaps. Let me move some of this stuff out of the way and show you what I'm talking about. There's going to be a gap here and there's going to be a gap here. And the reason why I did that was because I didn't want to have to give you measurements that were really crazy wonky to try to fill in the gaps and I actually really like the look of that so to get these on correctly are we doing okay I better should probably check the chat huh depending on which way you want yours to open up you're gonna want two going one way and two and one going the other I always do two on this side and one on this side so that's what I'm going to show you today. Some can stay longer if I want to go longer. Okay. So I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to put this tape only on the left hand half. So in the 
the light, you can see where that tape is. It's on the left half only, not on this side. And I'm going to line this up with the very bottom and the edge of the card so that it sits straight across. And then I'm going to press on where that tape is. I'm going to do the same thing for the panel that's going to crawl across the top. And so why I lay it on top of here is then I can see where that line is so that I don't put tape across that line and stick my card together. That's the only reason. Otherwise, then after that, you can move it and put your tape on however you want. And if you don't want it to come apart, use that double-sided tape, that Sook Wang, the red line tape. I forget what other names you have. And this one's going to line up against the edge, the left edge and the top of the card, and then just give that a push. Now you have this centerpiece, and here's where you have to be, you have to be an eyeballer. So let's take a drink so we can handle this. We can tackle this together. All right, last one. As you can see, we've already glued to this side. Now we're gonna glue to this side. Same thing. Flip it over so you can see where the middle is so you don't overdo your tape. And add your tape to the right side instead of the left side. And now you have to eyeball it up because you want to make sure that this is down the center and that there's a little bit in between each one and that they're kind of even. And then give it a push. And ta-da! There you go! If you were following along with me, you did it! Congratulations! I think these are really fun cards. They're just, they look really complicated and they're so simple. Yay! Okay, so here's our three cards. And these are all very much the same, but with a lot of different stuff going on. Now I want to show you a gateful card that, and you know, I could spend the rest of the time decorating this, but that's your job. You decorate how you like. Now you know how to put one together and do those parts on top. You take off and do it your own way. And I'm gonna take this base that I started here because this is what I wanna do with this. I wanna show you a different way to decorate this. How many of you guys are here because I, raise your hand um, virtually. <laughs> virtually raise your hand in the chat section if you came to the video today because you you saw one of my reminder posts, the little like post on Facebook that said, hey, don't forget we're having this whatever today and blah, blah, blah. Let me know. I, I would like to know. Oh, Christy, you almost kept up. Was I moving too fast? You guys got to let me know. I went ahead and emboss this in wood. You can see that. It's a little bit darker of a paper that's than what's here. And I want to go over this to show the wood grain even more with, um, well, let's do it the fun way. Cause you really don't have to do it this way, but this is super fun. I just really love it. I'm going to get out a piece of scratch paper so that this doesn't get all over my mat. And then I smoosh all my hand and everything into it. Um, oh yeah, my pajamas today, my pajama bottoms. They're little reindeers, the Rudolphs with little Christmas trees. Can you see them? Super cute. I think I wore these before. My sister gave them to me and they're comfortable. So I want to put my ink on with a roller. I just think it's really fun. I need a dark, uh, let's use this one today. I'm going to use chocolate chip makes me hungry. I didn't quite make it in time to have lunch before the live feed because I always misjudge how much time I need. I'm just going to rub this in where everything on my desk is shaking until I get a bunch of ink on there. Do you see that? So what I'm doing, I'm not rolling it back and forth in one spot. I'm rolling it and letting it spin, rolling it and letting it spin because that way it gets ink on the whole roller and not just one spot. And then I'm just going to Go over the whole thing, right? Just like this. Because I want, do you see? Now you can see those lines even better. That's my whole point. That 
way, if you just keep going around and around, it's going to take ink from around the whole roller. And it's going to do a really good job me covering everything for you. I love these inks, these old ones, because they pop out. And then when you, when you close it, the ink literally goes down and it faces down, which is what they recommend. And I need a baby wipe. So all I do is I just keep spinning and wiping until all that is off. And if I'm not sure, I just flip this over and run it down the page. Do you see how there's still some brown on there? It's almost gone though. And then I just let it dry. I just set it in its own little wonky holder and then I'm going to set this on my garbage can next to me in case I need that again. And I want to put this on the sides here, but I want some of that wood grain. I want some of the, what do you call those, the knots in the wood. So I can't remember what my measurements were, so I'm going to do this again. It's a little over two inches. So I'm going to make it two inches wide. And it's five and a half, so I'm going to make it like almost five and a half. So almost two and almost five and a half. I'm just going to cut off a smidge because I want just a little bit of a border. But if you're not, if you don't want to do that, then you go ahead and do yours. Do you see how that doesn't land on an exact really great number? That's why I do the edge. So if I, I literally do this two inches, there's going to be a tiny little border. So two inches by almost five and a half. If you're not happy with it, you can always cut more off, but you can't add it on later. So now I'm going to measure and see where I'm at with this. That is almost perfect. I think you can see pretty clearly that tiny little bit of brown around the whole thing. I'm going to make this into what looks like kind of a door. That's what I'm shooting for. We might actually make it. How much time? We have like half, half an hour? We might actually get this one done. Okay, so I have to stand up, make sure I get that in the right spot because I don't have a lot of room for error on this one. I need this really, really close. Are you just talking about embossings? You've used a rolling pin and it worked? I'll be honest, I've tried that. It never worked for me. Not worth a darn. Maybe I don't have enough oomph in my push. I don't know. Kathy says, Jean, we all want all the toys. Isn't that the truth? I do all my shopping on Amazon when I'm online. Well, majority of it. And I started a wish list. And the only one that looks at it is my mother at Christmas time. And she she goes, I went to your wish list on Amazon this year. And I'm like, yeah. And she goes, you have four pages of stuff on there. <laughs> I'm like, I know, Mom, but really... I said, I try to go in there and weed out the stuff that I decided I didn't need and, you know, whatever. I said, but just try to go for the ones that are, like, the newest, the most recently added. <laughs> right, Sandy? It didn't work for me either. I must be too weak. I can't push the rolling pin hard enough to make it indent. That's funny, you guys. 
I don't think I cut enough off of this one. I don't know what the difference is, but I'm going to just pinch hit and cut off the tip. <laughs> oh, you guys make me laugh. I think this works. I hope so. Well, it's not perfect, but it's mine. Yay! All right, so I did prepare some stuff ahead of time. Check it out. Here's my, do you might find this funny? Here's my Cricut mat that I use on my Silhouette Cameo. And there's some cuts that I did, and I'm just going to peel these off because I want to use these. <laughs> um, the reason I buy Cricut mats is the only reason why we buy things that don't go with our stuff. It's cheaper. And it's, and it's not an exact science. It's like a half an inch off. So when you, when you're, I've been using them for so long that I don't even think about it anymore. I just auto, auto adjust when I put things on the paper and I know exactly where to put them and they all cut out perfect. Um, so if you're thinking about doing that, you have to keep that in mind. But there's so much cheaper. It's just hands down. I have to use them. I'm looking for my little scraper tool. Not that I totally really need it, but yeah, here it is. It just makes it so much easier to get things off of here. And I'm going to cut these in half. Oh, I should probably move this to the other side. I pre-cut these hinges by simply looking for a hinge on uh, Google and then bringing them into my Silhouette software and tracing them without the holes because I didn't want the holes on there. So my hinges are going to go on like, you know, either side, obviously, and I'm literally making like a gate. I just thought this would be a really cool idea. So I could glue this on and let me see if I can get this folded decently. I could glue this on, fold it over and glue it on, or I could just literally cut them in half because you're going to see them on the back too, which is kind of cool. Or I could cut them in half and glue half on the front, half on the back. And I think that since this folds really nicely, Oh, I might have to cut some more because I only have two. I only have four then. Um, I think instead of cutting some more, I'll cut them in half today. Just to show you what I'm talking about. I won't have these cool things on the back, but that's okay. So let's get this out. So, instead of saying um, I notice that I say so a lot. And every time I say so, my dad used to say so buttons on your underwear. Does anyone else's dad say that? My dad is, is, was, is hilarious. He's a super funny guy. I'm just going to cut these in half because I don't want to have to make you guys wait while I cut more on the cameo. So there we go. Now I've got four of them. Ta-da! And I'm just going to glue these on with wet glue. I can't believe we had time to do all this. I was like panicking when every time... Kathy, point, and I want her to do it, don't get me wrong, don't don't get upset, Kathy, but every time she posts on there and all in capitals that what time it is or how much time I have left, I, I instantly panic. I don't know why. Like, I need to get over it. So I, I'm just going to eyeball where I want these. Like, do I want one right there, and then I want, like, one a little bit lower. That'll work. That looks good. My glue is just spurting out of my thing here. But I have my handy dandy wipe here. Oh, thank you guys for asking what abbreviations are because I get stuck on things all the time. Somebody just said, what's a dupe? D-U-P-E. She said, oh, is it a duplicate? I can tell you a funny story. Right after I um, added and started having Kathy help me out with, um, I almost said someone else's <laughs> Facebook page, uh, Quality Crafts. One day she said to me in private message, she's like, something, something about, um, what do you think about if we did this something at KTC? And she abbreviated it in all caps, KTC. 
I had no idea what she was talking about. My mind went blank and I'm staring at that going, I have no idea what, what she's talking about. <laughs> Made me laugh out loud like, what a dork. It's your own group. Hello, Quality Crafts, KTC. I had to laugh at myself. I felt like a complete idiot. But up until then, I had no, I had never used the abbreviation, and now it's it's so, it's so helpful. Oh, it's gonna cover up my knot here. I should have put the knot on the bottom. Oh, shucky darn. Too late now. I want both of these sides to look the same, so it'll be okay. Oh, I love that. Barbara says people on live TV also get time cues. I wonder if they panic a little bit inside when they get a time cue. That's funny. Oh, Lori said she made a stamping tool from an old cuddle bug embossing plate. Works great, she said. I have a video on how you can make one using a, um, an empty CD case. But I think you're going to make a more realistic one with this really cool uh, frame from, what the heck store is it? We don't have one around here. But I couldn't find it. I found it online, but it had to come from like something crazy like Germany, which was so ridiculous. But the ones that... The one that I show you how to make in one of my videos looks like this and it uses mini magnets. And then the top comes off, or the top opens up. And the inside here is a piece of foam. Come on, camera. Still haven't gotten the knack for this. There's a piece of foam, a piece of magnet, and then I just printed some grid paper and I just cut it to size and shoved it in there. It works well. I'd like to see the tutorial for the one that you use the embossing plate. I think that'd be interesting. Ikea, right. Liz Fizz, thank you. Liz says it's from Ikea. Good question. I get my um, magnets from online. The problem is, is that I got them from Amazon. <clears throat> this is exactly how they came. <clears throat> There's the skew number. They're a quarter of an inch by a sixteenth of an inch. And I've gone back to my, uh, what do you call it? All of my old purchases via Amazon because they keep track. And the seller no longer sells these so now you you're gonna have to look it look it up uh, because I can't give you the link because they don't sell them anymore now what I want to do on here let me open up my thing cuz it's gonna show me where the all the little things go so there's three of them one here here and here I oh I don't have silver paper so I'm gonna have to make silver paper and get my paper punch out I'll show you this cute little technique. I'm sure a lot of you guys already know how to do this. But my issue is I can never find my... I'm right in your face, aren't I? I can never find the hole punch when I need it. Because literally I've got a couple of hole punches. But they're never really that great. Okay, this is the regular hole, circle hole punch. But if you can find a hole punch that literally punches and doesn't rip the paper, I would love to have one. Because this one, no matter how many of these kinds I get, I've purchased over the years, they just don't do that great of a job. What I want to do is I want to create some little, what, what's going to look like little screws that went in these hinges. So I'm going to take a piece of this black paper that where I cut these out of. I'm just going to rip off a section here. <clears throat> and use my Versamark pad and just smash it down 
sewer that whole, it's not as wet in the middle, there we go, sewer all that wet is on the black. I'm just going to go ahead and put silver embossing powder on there, make my own silver paper. Now if you put your embossing powder in things like this, then you don't have to use paper underneath and try to get it back into your container. Just It all automatically goes right back into your container and then you can just close it up. I have it marked on the top and then I also have it marked on the side here because I store them stacked and that way I can find the one that I'm looking for really easily. And if you have issues with sound noise, um, I'm going to turn on the heat gun now. Get ready! Interesting. I don't know if this is getting old or what. Check out the little pock marks it made. Like right there. See those little craters? Oh, that's so cool looking. Anyway, I can uh, I can go to the smooth parts and get all the dots that I need. Oh, I don't think I quite got that spot. One thing I have to say about this kind of thing, <clears throat> if you're going to start out embossing and you've never done it before, just practice with a bunch of scratch paper like this and look at it and check it out. Like, you can tell. Oh, I don't know if you can see it from your view, but like right here is a spot that did not get fully melted. You can kind of sort of see it, but you just kind of have to get a feel for it. Like somebody can't just tell you how to emboss and when to stop and that kind of thing. You just kind of got to use it. So this is just a perfectly round hole punch and I'm going to cut out, I need three, six, nine, twelve. And hopefully these will be pretty round. Four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Ooh, my brain might be going, but I can still count. Hallelujah. And I'm just gonna take wet glue and you know, I can use my quicker picker, poker picker upper, <laughs> whatever it's called, but if it sticks to my finger, I'm just gonna use my finger. It's just harder to see where you're putting it when you use your finger. All right, fine. I'll use the quinker picker upper. <laughs> this I've shown before a bunch of times. The quicker poker picker upper by Quick Cuts. One side uh, removes the jewels from each other when they're all stuck together on one big long glue thing, and then the other side is sticky and it picks stuff up. So let's just use that. I have to use it on the silver side though, not the black side because that's where I want the glue to go. And then you can really see where you're putting things down. Oh no, look at that. That sticky stuff literally took, <laughs> literally took the silver off my dot. Check that out. Oh no, I'm gonna have to cut out a couple more. Well, shame on you, sticky thing, for ruining my dot. Let's try that again. Oh, man, too much glue? Oops. I think that's okay. That worked out all right. Little dabble do ya. Maybe I just stuck that on there like too too hard, I don't know. That was weird. It might not have been cooled all the way. 
That's another thing. I don't know. I'm not sure. Now I'm tossing around while I finish putting all these on. Let me know if you think I should put a little black line across these. Oh, there's the ruined one. To make them look like little screws or just leave them as shiny metal ones. Might have also been because I punched it with the punch and it just wigged out the side of that. I'm not sure. can't get my sticky tack to come out you have to literally twist this part piece right here you literally have to twist this and it comes out the end. it like forces it out the end if it won't come out any longer that means there's just not enough left in there to squeeze out in that case I would get yourself a tiny little dowel or the end of a pencil or the end of anything and put some of that poster tack you know what I'm talking about? That blue poster tack that you hang posters on the wall with? It's the same stuff. Make your own sticky tool. Thank you, Lori. She says she likes this card front so far. I think it's really cool. I don't really have a whole lot after this, what I was going to do with it. Although I'm thinking that it might be fun to add a sentiment or something to it. Oh. It's going to be a sad day when I get too old to do tiny stuff like this. Sad, sad day for me. I love tiny crafting. So I don't know, did anyone say, oh, like them, just leave them that way? Oh yes, metal ductwork tape for the screws, absolutely. Welcome to Santa's workshop. Yeah, okay, cool. Jody said she refilled hers with the poster tack, so you could unscrew this whole thing here. Oh no. Does this come out? Mine doesn't come apart. How'd you get the poster tack in there? That's what came off for me. I thought this part right here would come off, but it's not. I really like to know how you refilled that. That'd be helpful. You I mean I could shove some in this little hole? I, for that matter, you could just put a little piece of it right on the top of this thing. It doesn't have to be coming out of it, and it would work perfectly fine that way, too. So there we go. Not exactly the look I was going for, but it would be fun to have something that hooks into something else on here. How can we make that happen? Like a little a latch of some sort would be cool. Somebody said, pull the blue thing. What do you mean? This doesn't, this is all one piece of plastic. Oh, you just pushed it through this teeny tiny little hole there? You pushed it right in that little teeny hole. Oh my word, that would be really hard to do. I like Lori's idea. She made her own sticky tool with an old Marvel jewel picker up her. By adding beeswax and forming it to a point. 
then when she uses it she just warms the tip with her finger I want to see what this would look like if we put a line through it. I need a permanent black marker. That's what it looks like if you put the line through it and make it look like a little like a little screw. You still think it looks better without? I think it looks kind of cool with the little line. I'll let you guys decide. <laughs> Shell says do the lines. Kathy says no. All right, I'm going to leave them. I'm I'll leave it as is, but I'll tell you what. I think after I turn off the video, I probably get to do the lines. <laughs> so I really think the lines look cool. Okay, I don't you guys want to stay longer, but I totally could wrap this up now cuz I I literally have nothing else prepared. I like the latch idea, but I ran out of time and I didn't I didn't have time to get that ready for you guys. But I like the look of this. This is really, really neat. And I think you guys could take this and go in all kinds of different directions with it. And as it opened up, you can make it look like the inside of a building. You could make the inside here look like a window. Like you've walked into like you've walked into a room and opened the doors and then you're standing in a room looking out a window. That would be so cool. I almost think there should be like a little doorknob here, but I don't I don't know what shape to make it. And I could have made the hinges a lot smaller. Those are my thoughts. I do have some extra hinges here that are a little bit shaped different, so I may play around with those yet today. So that was a fun one that we did that was an altered one and I'm sure you have tons of ideas buzzing through your head now that you've seen a few of them. And here are all the ones that we've looked at or that I prepared for today. This is the one that's over at Quality Craft so if you want to join this challenge I highly encourage it. I think it will be really fun. Uh, just go over to Quality Crafts on Facebook. Friend. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Sassy Crafter. Friend either Kathy or I or both of us and have a conversation with us and let us know that you want to come in. And we'll we'll get you into the group just as soon as we can. And then you can join in, in the challenge of making one of these. This is the one that you're going to see in the album on Quality Crafts as the example for the Alta card. And this was the live stream showing you how to create the base of the card so you can just take off with that idea in any direction you want. You do not have to do one that looks just like this. You could do one that looks like doors like this. You can do anything that you want. John Marcus says you should have showed them the gatefold I showed you the other night. Well, here's the thing, Jen. I can only prepare so many examples and ideas and keep everything straight for a live stream. So I apologize that I didn't show the one that you wanted. But I would need to know that several days in advance so that I can prep for it. Um, are you talking about one that I physically created? Or are you talking about one that you showed me a picture of? Let me know. Because if it's one I physically created, I can dig for that. Give me, Clue me in. Because... I, I'm gonna wrap up and then I'm, I'm gonna watch for your I'm gonna watch for your little comment. Um, 
So, where was I? <laughs> Come on over to Quality Crafts when this ends. We can continue the dialogue in the chat. It would be really, really fun to have you. And I can't wait to see what you guys do with this. Like, I don't want to show you everything that you can do with it. But I really want... I. Lori says, where's the card I'd like to look at? Here's the thing. I think I know, I think it's coming to me, I think I know what she's talking about, but that is a different kind of a gatefold. I really want you to start off with a base that's like this. That literally opens up as a gatefold. I'm still waiting for her to answer. I know there's a lag, so she's it's coming, I'm sure. Um, I do want you to start off with a literal gatefold card, like this. And then add on top and get creative and go crazy with it. But do you see how I've, I've added these three panels to the top, but it's still underneath a, physically a gatefold card that opens up like that. And that's what I want to see for the challenge. Still waiting. We're at 301, but I am, I'm going to end it now. Um, when Jen gets back to me, I'm, I will totally show you that one on the next live stream if she reminds me and I pull it out. And don't forget to go to my blog if you need a uh, reference for some of the measurements. Otherwise, just go crazy. I can't wait to see what you guys post. And I would really, really love to see some of you guys over at Quality Crafts once we end here. <clears throat> it's over on Facebook. And usually the last thing I say before I go is to remember that it is the holidays and we send out birthday cards. We create the birthday cards, Kathy and I. We pay for all the postage and we don't require anything for membership, obviously, because it's a free Facebook page. But if you find it in your heart to send her, Kathy Dunahy, some postage stamps for the Christmas holiday along, you know, send her a card with some extra stamps in it, that would be really awesome. And I cannot wait to see you guys next video.